you ever dined with the king? There is usually so much to eat. Have you ever been wooed by a king? By royalty? Won't you just say yes? This is a king's invitation. Don't you dare say no. Leave your dreams, experience heaven and earth, make this trip. Rendezvous spot, the Christ Family Assembly, Word Communication Ministries, Welcome. Number 1 Faith Drive off Kudati Avenue, Onireke GRA Ibadan. Dates, Sundays at 8 a.m. and Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. for an interactive session of Digging Deep into the Word of God, where you have the opportunity to ask questions. Dress code as you are. So those of you go to seek prophets, be careful. Many lives have been misdirected and ruined. Prophet seekers. Prophecy in church is to confirm on issues of importance what is already going on on the inside of you. It's a place to be, belong, and become all who are created to be. Word Communications Ministries welcome experiencing life before death. I've been talking on divine guidance, a critically important aspect of our lives. If we get it right here, ladies and gentlemen, our Christian life just receives a boost. Our life will receive a glow. Every step of the way, your life becomes a miracle. The issue of hearing God or receiving divine guidance is very critical. It's one of the fundamental aspects of our Christian life that you can't afford to joke with. That you have to learn. And you have to make a part of your experience. Glory to God. God wants to guide us. We took a test from Isaiah 58 verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in God. I love that test because it preaches all the message. That test alone preaches all the message. The Lord will guide you continually. That's a promise. An unchanging promise. That the Lord will guide you. But not occasionally. Always. All the time. The, to your, the totality of your lifetime can be guided by God. And what be the consequence of being guided by God? Even when there is dryness, when there is drought, you will be satisfied. It means you will be satisfied all the time. It will satisfy your soul in drought. Then it will strengthen your bones. Being guided by God strengthens your life. He says you shall be a light like a watered garden. And like, and what is a watered garden like? Is it blossoms, it flourishes, and is fruitful. When you are continually guided by God, your life will flourish, your life will blossom, your life will be fruitful. You can't be stagnant. You can't be unfruitful when you are being guided by God. And it says like a spring of water. When you are being guided by God, your life will be pure, holy. And then it says like a watered garden, a spring of water, who waters do not fail. You will never fail. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that one of the greatest blessings of Christianity that distinguishes us from those who do not know God 
is being guided by God in our lives. And when this happens, it, uh, it means that we become target shooters. Our life will no more be guesswork. Our lives will no more be gambles. I think every one of us should make up our mind that if God still guides people today, I choose to be guided by God. And if he shows it, you must apply your, your hearts to all the things we have been discussing. We looked at several promises like uh, Psalm 32 verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you shall go. I will guide you with my eyes. We looked at Exodus 15, 13 where God says, where the word says, you in your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. If you are redeemed of the Lord, you are qualified to be led by God. You in your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. There is a holy habitation where God leads his redeemed to. That holy habitation is your destiny. That holy habitation is ultimately heaven. Your destiny on earth, heaven when life is over. When you are guided by God, you will make it to heaven. Then we looked at Isaiah 30 verse 21. Isaiah 30 21. And I hear shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way work ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left, wherever you turn, God wants to lead you. God wants to guide you. Now, this is in no way exhaustive. We just gave you enough scripture because the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. So we have so many promises of divine guidance that we can lay hold upon and claim and make this great blessing part of our lives. Then I gave a warning. Two things we need to pay attention to. Being objective and being subjective. To be subjective is to just take everything mystically and take totally out of everything reasoning and logic. In everything you take away reasoning, you take away logic, you are subjective. The other one is being objective. You don't accept anything unless it's logical, unless your brain can comprehend it. If you go to any of these two extremes, you will miss God. Because it is not everything that appeals to our brain. It's not everything that is logical. So, some things might not be rational, logical, intellectually possible, but they are correct and they are God-directed. But again, Satan also can bring things, mystical things, that are unreasonable, illogical, and if we follow it, we can be ruined. And the objective person, <laughs> if, this, if they say something that is proven, if it doesn't appear logical, sensible, 
mentally plausible, he will not do it. And yet, in the faith of the gospel, faith calls those things which are not. Those things that do not appeal to the eyes, to the senses, to the logic, to the brain. As though they are. A logical person will never believe that an eight patients can become well again. A logical person will never believe that a cancer patient can live again. A logical person can never walk on water. A logical person can never live where he is and go to a land he does not know, he, does, he doesn't have anybody in when God says like Abraham, go. So a logical person who is uh, extremely logical will miss God. Now, how can we be led? So we are saying there are seven main ways. Seven main ways. The first one, which we have already discussed, the first one is inward conviction. What did I call it? When you just know that you know something on your inside, the fact just drops on your inside. Or the knowledge just comes inside of you. We also call it the still small voice. And in what conviction about your future? And in what conviction about something to do or something not to do? But some of us, we just fall, we just pray, pray, pray. We are not expecting anything in terms of hearing from God. That you change from now. Everybody has that privilege. But some of us are so noisy, we don't pay attention. So, we missed those inward convictions. The still small voice. The Holy Spirit is dropping some facts on the inside of us. So, inward conviction. That's the first one. And this is where all hearing from God begins. Did you hear me? This is where hearing from God begins. Don't say that's not the way God speaks to me. That is the way God speaks to all of us. So it's fundamental to you, to everybody. Then there are other ways, six other ways apart from this. Essentially, these six other ways provide avenues for you to confirm what God says to you through inward conviction so that you don't become too subjective to the point that even if a satanic idea comes into your mind, you execute it and fall prey to the devil. Are you with me? So when any word conviction comes, at least you should have three other ways by which you can com uh, confirm that that inward conviction is the voice of God and not a strange voice. Is that okay? And the first one is confirmation of scripture. Any inward conviction must line up with the objective confirmation of scripture. That is, if you have any inward conviction, 
any inward feeling, any inward idea, and you look at the word of God, there is no word of God that confirms it. It doesn't agree with the scripture. It doesn't agree with the word of God, either in principle or literally throw it out. That's not deleting from God. So that's the first one. Does this inner conviction that I have, does it agree with the Bible, with the word of God in principle or literally? If it doesn't, for instance, if you suddenly as a Christian have a feeling to divorce your wife for some stupid things. And you say, God told me. Uh, wait till it's not in the scripture. Hmm? Eh? It contradicts the scripture. God doesn't want you to divorce her. God hates divorce. Are you listening to me? Or let me use another one. As a young lady, you have this inner conviction to marry a man, but the man is not born again. He doesn't know God. But he has money. And say you are convinced. My friend, the Bible says you shall not be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. It doesn't agree. Even in Israel, God says they shall not marry outside of their tribe. Your tribe is Christendom. You must marry from within the household of faith. Then, another way, the third way God leads us is by prophetic confirmation. Prophetic confirmation. When God speaks by prophecy. I made a warning here. That when it comes to the issue of your life and destiny. God will not speak about it first to another person. Not even to your pastor. Hmm? Prophecy will not be the first way God speaks to you about your life and destiny. Even if it's the first way, you are not supposed to act on it based on prophecy alone. For instance, I'm the first one to tell you you will be a prophet of God. You don't go out and say, Apostle, say, I'm a prophet. And you now say, I'm now, what's your name? Eh? Okay, Shuku, thank you. You now say, I'm prophet, okay, Shuku, Daniel. <laughs> How do you know you're a prophet? Apostle said it. <laughs> when Apostle prophesied it, if you have not known it before, you put it somewhere. You don't throw it away you put it in the wardrobe. If later you begin to know in your inward parts, you begin to have a conviction that you are a prophet, you will not remember. Ah! This is what the apostle was saying. That's when you can respond. Say, okay, this inward feeling I'm beginning to have has been spoken about years ago. Right? So those of you who go to seek prophets, be careful. Many lives have been misdirected and ruined. Prophet seekers. Prophecy in church is to confirm on issues of importance what is already going on on the inside of you. Prophecy can also be a pre-confirmation of what God is going to say to you later. 
It could be a confirmation of what God is already saying or a confirmation of what God is going to say to you later. This is different from prophecy about what is going to happen in the future. But who to marry, what work to do, calling of God, destiny, God speaks to you personally. Am I talking? The other way is godly counsel. Many people reject this way of God's leading and make a shipwreck of their lives. Especially, for instance, in marriage. And you hear some people say, to tell you, don't tell your story to anybody, oh, not even your pastor. You and your husband alone keep it to yourself. And that's how some people have kept it to themselves until their, their home broke. When you enter into marriage, you are entering a road. You begin to travel a road you have never traveled before. So many things to learn. So many things you don't know. And so, when the ships are down, you begin to discover that, ah, I thought God led me. We are not compatible. There are no two that are really compatible. You come with rough edges. And when you begin to roll, you begin to cut each other. And you think God was not in it. Remember that the marriage that was organized by God, joined by God, it was God who created Eve for Adam. It was God who did the marriage. That marriage had problem. Abi, the one made in heaven. So every marriage has its own challenges. And there are people who have weathered through it and they have come out successfully. Matured Christian elders. There are families we have seen who are doing well. They've had experience. They've matured in walking in godly ways. My friend, seek their counsel. Godly counsel is one of the ways God can lead you and confirm what he's already saying to you. You see, counsel, when you are being counseled, I can give to you in one hour what took me 25 years of pain to learn. And you just get a leap of 25 years in one hour. So it's stupid for anybody to think, oh, you don't need cancer. You need cancer in career. God is calling you to be a doctor. You are just a new graduate as a doctor. <laughs> there are doctors who have practiced for 25, 30 years. My friend, go and ask them questions. Go and seek cancer in any profession. Godly counsel. The next one is circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence. When this is when circumstances around your life confirm the leading you receive. When circumstances happening around you begin to drive towards a particular point. Everything happening begins to point you to a particular point of what you have been thinking or what you have been feeling or receiving in your inward person. Glory to God. Circumstantial evidence. When everything happening begins to give confirmation to how you begin to feel. Have you ever dined with the king? There is usually so much to eat. Have you ever been wooed by a king? By royalty? Won't you just say yes? This is a king's invitation. Don't you dare say no. 
Live your dreams. Experience heaven and earth. Make this trip. Rendezvous spot. The Christ Family Assembly. Word Communication Ministries. Welcome. Number one Faith Drive off Kudati Avenue. Onyereke GRA Ibadan. Dates Sundays at 8 a.m. and Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. for an interactive session of Digging Deep into the Word of God where you have the opportunity to ask questions. Dress code as you are. It's a place to be, belong, and become all who are created to be. Word Communications Ministries welcome experiencing life before death.